nipples. Almost everyone has them, regardless of gender. They allow mothers to feed their babies and they can help steam things up a bit in the bedroom. But like every other part of the human body, nipples can be downright weird. On this episode of the Infographic Show, we're looking at weird facts about male nipples. The reason both men and women have nipples is due to how the embryo forms. Several genes determine if a baby is male or female. There's the SRY gene, or sex-determining region Y, which lives on the short arm of the Y chromosome. It's activated when the embryo is about seven weeks old, and it'll lead to the development of male reproductive organs, while female reproductive organs will disappear. Breasts and nipples form before the SRY gene activates. That's why, regardless of your sex, almost everyone has nipples and a mammary ridge. Now that you have a quick rundown, let's talk about nipples and men. Male nipples can lactate. It's rare, but it, it definitely happens. Generally, men don't produce enough prolactin, the hormone that stimulates the mammary glands to produce milk. It's not unheard of for prolactin levels to surge in men, though. This can result from hypothyroidism, since it impacts the pituitary gland. Prolactin production in men can also be triggered by medications like antipsychotics, chlorpromazine, steroids, and heart medication digoxin. It can also occur when men take estrogen or prolactin. If you want to know how to make yourself lactate, there's not a lot of research on the matter. There's also not a ton of research on whether or not the milk that men produce has similar nutritional or immunity-boosting properties as women's breast milk. In one study that has been done, one man who did produce breast milk showed that it had the same concentrations of lactose, proteins, and electrolytes as the colostrum and milk from lactating women. Dr. Shandani Dejour, a neonatal and pediatric hospitalist at Lucille Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford University, said, There's no evidence to suggest colostrum between cisgender women and other breastfeeding, chest-feeding parents would be different. Nipples can be sensitive. While a lot of people don't consider a man's nipples to be an erogenous zone, nipple stimulation can activate the same parts of the brain as genital stimulation, helping intensify sexual arousal. In a study performed by the Journal of Sexual Medicine, they used magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, to note which areas of the brain become active when women touched various parts of their bodies. The genital-sensing brain areas in women roughly correspond to the same areas in men. According to Rutgers University psychologist Barry Komisarek, the nipple finding was a surprise. My speculation is that this could be the basis for many women saying that nipple stimulation is erotogenic because it stimulates the same area as the genitals. Nipples can chafe and bleed during physical activity. Runners already know this one, though. If you're familiar with marathons, you might have witnessed a male runner or two with red streaks running down their chest. Chafing appears to be just a part of a runner's life the result of friction from skin rubbing against itself or clothing. As men run, their nipples can rub against their shirts and start to bleed. This can happen during other strenuous activities too. If you're a runner and you want to avoid chafing, here are some ideas. If you're able to, take off your shirt or at least try to pull your shirt away from your nipples. It's not efficient, but it can help combat chafing and avoid nipple bleeding. If the damage is already done, you can apply hydrogen peroxide to your nipples after the race. It'll sting, but it'll help. Then apply some antibiotic ointment and put a bandage or gauze over it. If you run off, then you might want to invest in nipple guards. Regular bandages might come off when you sweat, but there are nipple guards made for this specific purpose. You should also avoid cotton and wear synthetic or moisture-wicking fabrics. This will minimize irritation. And most importantly, stay hydrated. Hydration can reduce the risk of chafing. When you're dehydrated, it's more difficult for your body to flush away salts from your skin. If you drink plenty of water before, during, and after, you'll be able to sweat freely and it won't dry into salt crystals, which will irritate your skin. Did you know that 1% of men have a third nipple? They're also known as supernumerary nipples. The third nipple, or polymastia, or polythelia, is a condition where you can have one or more extra nipples on your body. It's estimated that only about 200,000 Americans have one or more extra nipples, and even though people will only normally have an extra nipple, it is possible to have up to eight. It's also a lot more common in men than in women, most commonly appearing along the, quote, milk line, the area that goes from your armpit and goes down through and past your nipples to your genitals. The best way to tell a third nipple apart from a mole is that third nipples usually have a nipple-like bump on them. While most extra nipples will appear on your milk line, they can also appear anywhere on your body, including hands and feet. If they appear outside of the milk line, they're called an ectopic supernumerary nipple, all of which fall into six different categories. 
Category 1 is when the nipple has an areola around it and it usually has breast tissue underneath it. The areola is that small circular area of pigmented skin around the nipple. For Category 2, the nipple will have breast tissue under it, but it doesn't have an areola. A Category 3 nipple will have breast tissue, but doesn't have a nipple. Category 4 is when there's breast tissue, but the areola and nipple are absent. Category 5, or pseudomama, has an areola around it, but it just has fat tissue instead of breast tissue. Oh, and how could we possibly forget about Category 6, or polythelia, which will have the nipple appear by itself with no areola or breast tissue? But why do third nipples appear? It all goes back to the embryo. During the fourth week of pregnancy, the milk lines thicken. The milk line is made up of rigid ectoderm tissue, which is tissue that will become part of your skin. Typically, the milk line stays thick and forms the nipples while the rest of the skin softens. But if it doesn't become regular ectoderm tissue, supernumerary nipples can appear where the tissue remains thick. This is how you can end up with a third nipple. You can have your third nipple removed, but they're mostly harmless. They don't indicate any underlying conditions and typically they're removed for cosmetic reasons. They can lactate just like your regular nipples, though. You may have noticed that the media usually censors female nipples, while male nipples are allowed to run free. Female nipples have always been made a lot more controversial than male nipples. There have only been a few documented concerns about male nipples, and one of those instances can be traced back to Japan. In 2015, Japan was dealing with insufferably high summer temperatures. As a result, men began to take off their undershirts to beat the heat. Gu, a Japanese search engine, conducted a survey that asked what kind of fashion trend women hate to see from men. The winner was Sra Chikubi, meaning see-through nipples. Some women even considered it to be sexual harassment, although it's unclear if it actually meets Japan's legal requirements to be considered sexual harassment. This might be why Japan has a summertime industry of nipple concealers for men. Outside of that, nipple censorship is typically reserved for women. Michael Bronski, a professor in the practice of activism and media studies of women, gender, and sexuality at Harvard University, explained, Male nudes with nipples and genitals were often meant to embody virtues such as patriotism, steadfastness, moral and emotional strength. Female nudes were more sexualized even as they represented female virtues such as modesty. And of course, statues of women that were not nude, often goddesses or monsters such as Medusa, represented male qualities wisdom in the case of Athena, or male fear of castration, such as Medusa. Men can get breast cancer. It's rare, but at least 2,400 men are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. Since everyone is born with at least some breast tissue, that means anyone can get breast cancer. When it does happen to men, it's usually in older men, but it can happen at any age. Never assume you could not get breast cancer because you were a man. For male breast cancer, doctors will typically treat it with surgery to remove the breast tissue. It can also be treated with chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Stay vigilant, and if you notice the signs, check with your doctor. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Symptoms might include a painless lump or thickening of the skin on the chest. In the early stages, you might even notice changes to the skin on your chest. This can be dimpling, puckering, scaling, or even changes in color. Changes in the nipple structure can also be a sign of breast cancer, including skin color or scaling. In rare cases, nipples can even begin to turn inward. If you notice discharge or bleeding from your nipple, it might be a sign of cancer. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, make an appointment with your doctor immediately. If you're a male, it might not be statistically likely to be cancer, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't be mindful. Nobody really knows what causes male breast cancer. We do know it starts when the cells in the breast tissue develop and changes in their DNA occur. In healthy cells, DNA tells your body to grow and multiply at a set rate and to die at a set time. When cancer cells develop, they change the DNA's instructions. These cells begin to multiply a lot faster than normal cells while continuing to live for longer compared to healthy cells. This causes an overabundance of cells leading to the creation of a tumor, which can invade and destroy healthy body tissue. Over time, cancer cells can spread to other parts of the body, which is known as metastatic cancer. There are a few types of breast cancer that can develop in men. Ductal carcinoma begins in milk ducts or the tubes that connect to the nipple. It's the most common type of breast cancer in men. Lobular carcinoma begins in the milk-producing glands, also known as lobules. Men typically have less lobular cells, so this type of breast cancer is a lot less common in males. There are other types of cancer to watch out for, like Paget's disease of the nipple and inflammatory breast cancer. Paget's disease of the nipple or Paget's disease of the breast is a rare form of breast cancer. 
It starts on the nipple and expands to the areola but normally affects males over the age of 50, and those diagnosed with it typically have underlying ductal breast cancer. In most cases, it rarely is confined to just the nipple. Possible signs of Paget's disease of the nipple can include flaky or scaly skin on the nipple, crusty, oozing, or hardened skin on the nipple, areola or both, itching, redness, tingling or burning sensation, straw-colored or bloody nipple discharge, a flattened or inverted nipple, a lump in the breast, or a thickening on the breast. If you happen to be familiar with Paget's disease of the bone, these two diseases are not related. Men can develop gynecomastia an increase in the amount of breast gland tissue in males. It's typically caused by an imbalance of estrogen and testosterone, and it can affect one or both breasts. Some men develop gynecomastia as newborns, during puberty, or as they get older as a part of normal changes in hormone levels. While it isn't a serious problem, it can be difficult for some men to cope with the condition. It's common to experience pain in the breasts, but it might also make some men feel embarrassed or self-conscious. It can go away on its own, but it can also be treated with medication or surgery. Gynecomastia can also result in puffy or pointy nipples in men. The enlarged tissue will push the nipple and areola outward, and that's what causes it to look puffy or larger than average. Since it's unrelated to chest muscle, men may find that the puffy nipples don't go away even if they lose weight or work out. Men can also experience inverted or oversized nipples. Inverted nipples can cause discomfort, and they can impact self-confidence. Fortunately, this can be corrected through plastic surgery. The process involves the doctor releasing underlying tissue so that it'll point outward like an average nipple. Did you know a man holds the world record for the heaviest weight lifted by nipples? A man known as the Baron is in the Guinness Book of World Records for having lifted 71.87 pounds or 32.6 kilograms with his nipples. The Baron, who is originally from Finland, achieved this on July 19, 2013 at Bush Hall in London, England. In fact, quite a few nipple-related world records are currently held by men. Sage Werbach, or the Great Nippolini, holds the official Guinness World Record for heaviest vehicle pushed by nipples. He was able to pull a 2,179.27 pound or 988.5 kilogram vehicle for 65.62 feet or 20 meters. The event took place on March 25, 2011, on the set of Lo Show de Record in Milan, Italy. And let's not forget Daniele Tuveri, a man from Italy who holds the world record for the longest nipple hair. In March 2013, his areola hair measured at around 6.69 inches, or 17 centimeters. If you are thinking about trying to beat their records, remember that there is an age restriction. You can only receive the record title if you're 16 years of age or older. The Montgomery glands in the nipples were named after a man. Montgomery glands are also known as tubercles and are small sebaceous glands found in the nipple and areola. They secrete an oily or waxy substance that's meant to help lubricate the skin. They're meant to help prevent sore and cracked nipples while breastfeeding, as well as protect babies from germs and can even guide babies to latch onto the breast through scent. Irish obstetrician William Featherstone Montgomery was the first to describe the areola papule back in 1837. It may not be so shocking that a man would be the first to name them, especially since women were often barred from being involved in the medical sciences for centuries. But men have Montgomery glands too, as the nipple and areola are formed before sexual dimorphism occurs. Male nipples are subject to weird and unexpected injuries, possibly due to the fact that they stick out. In Muskogee, Oklahoma in 2015, Leonard Overcash was helping out a co-worker with some yard work. When the unexpected happened, a zebra bit off part of his nipple. The zebra had been watching him from behind a nearby fence before reaching out to bite him. Although it is illegal to own an exotic animal in Muskogee, the owner had the zebra for 10 years, claiming that she didn't know she wasn't allowed to have him. According to the owner, she had asked city officials if she needed a permit and received a resounding no. Prior to the whole nipple-biting incident, the zebra hadn't caused any problems. The owner had to pay the man's medical bills, and she was given 30 days to rehome the zebra. Overcash said that the ordeal was painful and traumatizing, but it wasn't long before he was doing much better and he had gotten back to work. Sometimes it takes a little more than mere lost nipples to keep a good man down. Now check out Weird Facts About Testicles, or watch Weird Facts About the Male Body.